Hey guys, welcome to the Assembly's weekly workshop. I'm Rishan, and today we'll be making a 3D printed hollow clock. So here's our agenda for today. We'll start off with an introduction, a slight demo to show you what we're going to be making, the circuitry behind it, the parts needed for it. Uh, finally, we'll end off with the assembly and a final test to show the final product. So, starting off with the introduction, um, we are the assembly, if this is the first time you've caught us. Uh, we're a smart lab in a maker space based, off, uh, based in N5 since 2014. Uh, we host over 350 free workshops weekly. We do this every Saturday, have been doing for a very long time. With a focus on smart technology, sometimes with practical applications or just technology in general. So we have four main or three main types of uh, uh, workshops that we hold. Hack, where we do embedded systems and IoT. Code, where we do more software related things. Um, data science where it's more um, things like machine learning, AI, and we have been moving to entrepreneurial stuff, so we do have um, more things for like fund fundraising for startups, different things like that. Um, this one would fall under the hack category since we deal with an Arduino. Um, so our audience consists, uh, we have a wide variety of audiences, sometimes students, sometimes professionals, entrepreneurs, other people from N5, whatever you name it. So if you'd like to uh, keep up with us and meet us around, we, here's our social media, at Make Smart Things, um, all, all across, um, on every platform. If you want to visit our website, it's www.theassembly.ae. And you'll find our other workshops there as well. So uh, looking at the demo, the main piece that we're going to be looking at is this part right here. So, um, also, so if you want to uh, follow along, all of the files needed that you would need are on this GitHub link, so you can scan the QR code and go there directly. So, uh, this is what a hollow clock is. It basically, it's a bit of an illusion. Um, essentially, you'll have this gearbox here with the hollow clock mounted and essentially it'll fun function like a normal clock, except it's hollow, so I can pass your hand through it. There's no face per se, it's just the two dials. Uh, you could um, model it a little differently to give like notches for each minute or each, um, or each tenth of a minute, and then do it that way, but I prefer this cleaner aesthetic, so I went with this design. So essentially, it's mainly a desk piece. It's a showpiece for your desk, it's a desk clock, but it also functions like a regular clock. So if you want to get like a general time um, using an analog clock, you can use it. So uh, the cool thing about a clock like this is it's entirely 3D printed, um, save for the circuitry, uh, and a, one other additional part, which I'll cover in a bit. So as long as you have access to a 3D printer, be it maybe through university or maybe you have one at home, this is something that you can make. So let's move on to the circuitry. Aside from the 3D printed parts, there are three other items that you'll need, uh, which you can either get locally or through Amazon, however you see fit. So the three main things are an Arduino. It doesn't have to be an Uno. Uh, you can use an Arduino Nano. On, uh, actually, it's preferable. But just for the sake of demonstration, we've chosen to go with an Uno. Um, a stepper motor. So this thing right here. One second. So this stepper motor right here, uh, specifically the 28 BYJ48 uh, series. So it, the um, case and everything is designed and uh, to fit this style of motor. And also the driver that comes with it. Um, these kind of go hand in hand. And neodymium magnets. So that's the part that sells the whole uh, hollow look. So uh, I'll show you more in a bit. So this one. Here is a six by two millimeter. Um, you could get larger, but you will have to f change the um, the files for because the, sp the spacing for the parts here have been tailor fit for this size of um, parts. That size of magnet, my bad. So here are the three things. Again, it doesn't have to be an Arduino Uno. If you want to follow us, uh, uh, follow along exactly as we do, you can go with that. But a nano works just fine. Here's the motor and 
The other thing is break hot wire. So obviously you need to make connections. If you would like to solder them, uh, so if you're using something like a nano, you could solder these parts. So you don't technically need the break hot wires then. But if you want to keep it modular and maybe just try it for a project and you don't want to keep it long term, you can use these break hot wires. Um, ours here is a male to male and a female to female, so we can keep them. That's why they look like this. Um, so here, here's what the circuitry looks like. So, okay, just to give you guys um, a description. So here, you'll see these uh, five pins here. These are what connect to the motor. Okay, the, there's one for power and the rest of the um, four different types of signals that gets sent to the motor. So each of these LEDs here correspond to the different pins of each motor. So th these four pins here, starting from here, are A, B, C, D, respectively. This, those, now, in order to send signals to, the, to those pins, that's what um, in 1, 2, 3, 4 is. So these pins here, over here, is what we'll be connecting to. And then you have your power and ground here. So let's start with those connections. Um, and those will go, uh, I'll explain the Arduino side of it in just a moment. So just to keep things simple, um, start off with power. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So let's see if get a good angle of all of this. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, starting off with power, um, you hook it up into the plus. So, there are two pins here. Um, it's a little harder to show, but I can show you on screen. So you have two pins here. The plus is your power, the minus is your ground. So plug in your power, and I'll go to the five volts on your Arduino Uno, or whichever. But make sure it's five volts, not 3.3. .3. Um, then you have your ground. So I'll use a brown wire for this. You have, um, so the UNO has a couple of ground pins, but NANOs just have one, so uh, do it as you see fit. So we have the ground connected, ground and power connected, now we can connect the rest of the um, uh, signal bits. So for the signal bits, they connect as you, um, as you see here. So in one would be the first pin, in two would be the second pin, and so on and so forth. So um, let's just get those connected really quick. You could color code the wires, but um, it's not really necessary. So one goes to one, and so on and so forth. Ooh. And that's honestly the entirety of it. So you just need the four signal bits that will connect to the motor and um, and the power and supply. So this part here is the motor. It goes to the motor. It's uh, put in the gearbox for now. But you just plug this into the white header here that you see. So just plug it in. Once you feel a snap, it should be in there. OK, so now let's go to the three parts that concludes the circuitry. So um, the SCL files for all of these parts are actually um, in the GitHub repository. So uh, you can just grab those. If you'd like to model your own or perhaps make changes, you can do so as well. So 
there are a few more parts, but these six here are more or less the main ones. So you'll have your your minute rotor here, which is this piece here. It is connected to the min minute hand as well, but that's part of what sells the illusion. Um, so you'll have this piece here. Uh, you could make a cover and change its color so it, it truly sells the whole floating illusion. Um, so you have your minute rotor here. You have your hour rotor here. Okay. It, the, the two pieces, so these are spare pieces. So they fit on top of each other like so. And then you have your R hand, which is the piece I showed you earlier. So it's just the hand over here. Uh, these were other prototype pieces that I was working on, so basically they would fit together, oops, like so, and allow for free movement. Now, if you notice, on the hour rotor, there are two spots here for magnets. This is where you would put um, the magnets for the pieces. So you have two pieces here. Each of them uh, on the inside have a north and south pole, so north-south or whichever way it works. You want them to face into, you want two poles to be facing uh, the inner ring because then once you put, slot in the third and final magnet into the R hand, what ends up happening is depending on the polarity of uh, this magnet here, either it, it will be repulsed or just like so. So it will stick to exactly the middle. So this is what actually keeps the um, the R hand in place. So as so when this is mounted in the center, as the, the, the ring rotates, it will follow um, along with this. So that's how, at least, uh, there have been several iterations of this done by other people. I'm not the first one to do this. But that's how I chose to do the um, the R hand. Additionally, there's also the front and rear cover. So this piece here is the rear cover. This is, what's, this is what goes at the back. And then the front piece, I don't have a spare, unfortunately, so I can show you the final piece. This part here, um, like it's basically like a shell that seats with all the pieces seated inside. Um, here's the other pieces. I, uh, you could screw this in. It was designed with screw mounts in, but I decided to hot glue it just so that if in, if in case I want to take it apart, it makes it easier. So yeah, uh, with this design, it's slightly different. Instead of having um, a nub like this one on top, instead I chose to go with a screw mount. So I screwed it in place, and genu uh, it generally is a more stable cleaner. So it can rotate freely, but once it finds some magnets, it will snap into place. So if I can, yeah. So the magnets are right underneath here, and it follows along. Then you have the actual, so inside the gearbox, you have your different here. So you have the case and the cap. So this is the cap that goes on top of the gearbox to just close up all the pieces. And in the front here, you'll have the hollow clock sitting. But um, then you'll have your individual gears. So uh, you have your bevel gear. Okay, so this is what um, this is what turns the actual drive gear, so that's this gear right here. You have your worm gear, this is for the R hand, so um, it's set to give like less rotations per minute since we only have one actual motor driving both the, um, the minute and the R hand. Uh, this is the actual drive gear for the minute, uh, minute rotor, so basically how these fit into places, this is turned directly by the uh, by the stepper motor. Then you have the spoke here, which ha which seats uh, the bevel gear, and these two interact depending on the gear ratios to give the difference between minute and hour. Um, the machining for the these will differ depending on how good your 3D print is, so there is a bit of inaccuracy there, but most of it is um, adjusted through the code, which I will show you guys in a bit. So those are three pins. Um, additionally, there's also a little pin here. Um, it's just just a tiny cylinder that goes through the drive gear to let it sit um, comfortably in the in the gearbox. So now let's look at the actual assembly. So that's what your gearbox will look like when fully assembled. 
So what you want to do is you have your drive gear here. Just connect the bevel gear as well. These two pieces here. Then you can put your uh, your drive gear s seated in here. So that's what this piece here is on the screen. So it make sure it fre freely rotates. Um, if you try lifting it directly, like directly upwards, it should not come out. You ne you'll need to uh, push it forward and then remove it because there's a little lip on one side of the. Um, oh, actually, let me get free as well. So this pin here, uh, although it looks like a perfect, perfect cylinder, um, one side does have a bit of a lip on it. So you want the side with the lip to go on the back of the drive gear. So you should, you won't be able to push it through. Okay, and then you, you can put it in there. Uh, this piece, okay. So be careful with the worm gear, because as this is designed, uh, it fits really snugly. But what that means is this section right here where you, with the start of the spoke, uh, the end of the spoke and the um, end of the bevel gear is very fragile. Um, as you can see, uh, mine did break and I had to hot glue it back into place. But so the best way to do this, to do this is put this in, take your, um, your piece here and move, put both pieces back into place at once. If, if there's any stress on the spoke, then it can snap and you'll ha you'd have to do what I did. Yeah. Once everything s sits. Uh, as you can see, th there is a bit of tolerance here. Um, that's because the, the square hole put here. So this, this square hole um, can differ when, you, when, you, when the print comes out. So if it isn't, doesn't perfectly fit in with this piece, there's a bit of tolerance. And um, it doesn't really do much. Uh, but over like several days, y you can have like a, a bit of a difference in your clock. But you can always adjust that. Okay. So, yeah, with that set up, um, you would just have to put the magnets in place, assemble this part here. You can get a tiny screw to just fit in here. Uh, you don't want it to be too tight because you still want this to freely move around. Uh, you don't want it screwed to the minute hand. Um, that, okay. So, now here comes a bit of the janky part um, for the test demo. So obviously, okay, here is the code. So open up your Arduino IDE. You can just copy the code from here. Um, no, this is just s defining how your stepper motor is going to work. So um, this, okay, so this is a bit difficult to understand, but because we're 3D printing it, it's not going to be perfectly machined. So there, uh, we need to accommodate for tolerances. So when you're defining milliseconds per minute, normally, or, or at least in, mo in every case, in, theoretically, it is 60,000 because 60,000 milliseconds per minute. But uh, it does differ. You would have to fine tune this to get a, pr a perfect timing. Or this worked for me. You can check for yourself. Um, same with steps per rotation, it changes. Uh, then you'll have your ports here. So one thing to note, uh, as you can see here, um, you would have your, when you're making the header for the ports, it'll work, it, depending on your motor, it might turn the wrong direction. If it does, just invert these. So instead of two, three, four, five, do five, three, four, uh, three, two. And it, it should start rotating the correct direction clockwise. Um, then you have a 2D array here, which gives you the sequence for the stepper motor. And now the main thing is the rotate function. So we'll just initiate these values here. Uh, these are just ternary operators that check if step is less than zero. If so, set delta to one. If not, set, set it to three. Um, same, we have another uh, ternary operator here. This just um, lets it know, depending on the phase, how much to rotate. Uh, and additionally, it'll also take, so the rotate function will take in an integer that tells it how much to rotate by. And here is just a calculation for determining uh, what to do with that value. In the setup, you'll just set up those ports that we mentioned out, uh, earlier. They're, they'll all be outputs. Um, and then for rotate, make sure you do minus 10 and then 10. So this is 
um, these are more in depending circuits you'll keep this running permanently right so sometimes um, you would like to do this uh, a rotation with 10 and then the after setup is done um, this is what you you'd normally be running again you just uh, specify the rotations um, here is just uh, you uh, you declare these uh, these variables because the way it works is it compares the previous minute um, and the previous position and determines how much to move it by based off of what the previous value was um, again these don't take into consideration the tolerances so you if you want a perfect um, perfect accuracy then you would have to fine tune them uh, but yeah uh, this again available on github uh, the um, code should just link to this repository it's under um, the code and slides file and you can just uh, copy it once you upload it um, you should have a BAL connector you could keep it uh, plugged into via USB and it will work just fine but I have a barrel here so what you're going to do is here. so we have a gearbox assembled we have this piece here so there should be a hole for this tab to go in just slide into place uh, again this one has a little bit of tolerance but I left it there uh, I could make it tight but then for the purpose of this demonstration keep it you keep it loose now before you start the code uh, the way to set this up is first so one second. you would have to have your starting position um, correct so so this is just the site that sorry this is the site that I found um, you go to real time and try to match the hands of the clock with that it's a bit janky but then it's just a one time setup so um, if anything what you could do is so what I found is you can keep um, the center of this clock and match it up with the center of the screen here and basically just align your minute and hour hands and then once you do that one second yeah for the purpose of this demonstration I just get the rough ballpark correct you can put it in maybe set it a bit ahead to account for delay and once you do that so initially when you first plug it in it will do one rotation so here so as soon as I plug this in you will also see these LEDs light up so right here okay yeah so maybe the camera didn't, uh, the camera wouldn't have caught that but it rotated by a bit and you had these three LEDs light up so again very simple concept a uh, very simple project anyone can do it this is more as a way of testing how to print parts um, how designing a file works and just simple circuitry because what this taught me was so when you're building the R hand here you want to take into account for these tolerances so you um, depending on your 3D printer's nozzle size, you take that into consideration. There's also the overhangs here. A uh, lot of curved parts, so uh, you would also account for that. How do you want to orient the part, or do you just want to build with support, um, as well as the gear ratios, and yeah. So that's more or less concludes. Um, that's what your finished product will look like. So these LEDs here that you see, every time a signal is sent to them, they light up, and they turn your um, clock. So that concludes the whole video. If you guys have any questions, be sure to put them in the comment section. For the first, uh, for the duration of the video, as it was released, we'll be constantly checking and updating any questions that you guys may have. So, um, any if any questions, please don't be afraid to drop up. So you can find us at um, these links for, for social media, and tune in for the next for next week's workshop. Thank you.